17 CF 5844. I believe they've gone down to get our jury, which means that my group is a good group because 15 people basically on time is amazing. Ms. Jensen, I assume we're going to start back with the video. Yes, ma'am. I have it lined up. It might be a few seconds before where we stop, just because I can't get it exactly where Right. It but it's close. Okay. Um, so why, and then I'll talk to the defense here in a second, but my plan is to tell the jury it's about two more hours and that <laughs> by my calculations, it's about two hours and six minutes or five minutes. So if they need a break before the, we get to the end, I'm just going to tell them to raise their hand and we'll take a break and we'll, we'll stop it. Um, Mr. Barry Barasset. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, you said you wanted us to bring up to you any potential issues before. Uh, probably late in the day or tomorrow, they're going to call uh, FDLE uh, uh, agent uh, Rich to testify about the firearm. And uh, she has previously testified in a deposition uh, that, the, that the bullet is not suitable for comparison. She also testified about the weight and that it's a 38 class caliber that could be a 38 of 357, a 9 millimeter, any number of firearms. Uh, and I think what the state's going to try and do is call her now and say, uh, with respect to a later report that I got, that, um, let me just go to this so I clarify, that they looked at a 38 special caliber Smith and Wesson, and she said the bullet displays similar discernible class characteristics to item 21 revolver. However, the bullet lacks sufficient individual characteristics for microscopic comparison. So I, I think it's just like fingerprints. You can't say a fingerprint is not suitable for comparison and then have them come on and testify. But there's two or three ridge marks there that are similar to his ridge marks. I mean, that's not an expert opinion at all. And so we just want to alert the court that we're going to object to her testimony beyond the fact that it's what class it is, what weight it is, and that it's not suitable for comparison. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anything you want to say, Ms. No, Jones? I mean, the bullet was initially sent to FTLE when it was found in Taylor Wright's skull. We recently found a firearm. We sent it to the same analyst to have her look at it with this, with this bullet. She cannot identify this bullet to this firearm. However, she will say that there are discernible class characteristics. She's an expert in her field. She's allowed to examine additional items that we send to her for analysis, and she's entitled to give her opinion. Okay. I'm not asking you to rule on it now, but I think that uh, it is an issue, and, and uh, I don't think she can testify to that. It's a typical example when you have a fingerprint on it. You can't say, well, there's two ridge details that are comparable to his ridge details, which is basically is given an opinion uh, not supported by the scientific evidence. And the, the people tend to give great weight to expert opinions. So I, okay, so let me make sure I think I do understand the issue. There was a, um, a bullet actually found in the skull. Yes, ma'am. That bullet was sent off for analysis. Much later, a firearm was found. You sent that to the same expert, and there was a comparison done, and the expert says, I can't say for sure that this bullet came from this gun. However, there are some characteristics which are similar. similar. Yes, ma'am. Just to make sure I understand the issue. OK. Yeah, she did say the bullet was not suitable for comparison. And, that, and, and Judge, that has not changed. She's not identifying this bullet to this firearm. She's not saying this bullet was fired from this firearm. She is saying it is consistent with, based on the class characteristics. And also the point is that this firearm has never been connected directly to the death of Taylor Wright. Well, I understand that. Okay. And I can supply the court if you'd like later with both reports and her deposition.
consistent with class. Tell me what that was again. Okay. Good to know. I can be pondering on that. Um, Mr. Brossett or Mr. John Brossett, anything else? No, ma'am. Ms. McArthur, you good? If you need a comfort break, you just let them know, okay? Um, I think as soon as we have our jury, we will. Were y'all able to make any headway on streamlining, trimming? Judge, as I said yesterday, I am agreeable to have Detective Gigliotti testify that he had these phone conversations with Ms. MacArthur, the dates um, that they were recorded, to not publish them, um, but move them into evidence and the jury can listen to them if they want to or if they don't want to. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure. I think they wanted to talk to their client and we'll let me know. I sent, I sent them an email to the wrong email address. I put the old one, but I resent it today because I've got the, the four telephone calls are recorded, but on mine, you can't tell what dates they are. They're just random, except for one that she said she's not going to play, and that was a date before she was arrested. So if they can give us those dates and we talk to our client, you know, if we can work that out, we'd be glad to. Mr. Brossett, if you'll look on the evidence list I gave you, they're all married. But I can't link them to my notes. You see what I'm saying? If I got a number I gave you on the desk. Well, well, if y'all can talk, we got probably a couple minutes right now. I mean, here's the thing. At some point, we're going to do this two-hour thing, and then he's going to be on the stand. Other things are going to be introduced, and then we're going to go and take a later lunch today. Um, I'll probably give a break. You know, if we make it the full two hours, it'll be about 11 for them to have snacks. And then we'll probably do lunch at, like, 1245, because I don't want the afternoon to seem like it's, ca you know, never-ending even though it will be never ending in some regards. But I want them to feel like, okay, we're, I just feel like that's gonna come up pretty short. It's not gonna come up in the next two hours, but it is gonna come up while he's on the witness stand. Yes. That they're going to play another tape to this. Right not, not before the phone calls. Okay, she's, got, she's given y'all an order. She's been following the order pretty consistently. I've got an Exhibit 20 is a 924 phone call to Gigliotti. That's 27.54 minutes, 27 minutes, 54 seconds. Then there's another phone call to Gigliotti, 21 minutes, 51 seconds, and then a third phone call. So they're going to hit and... Um, I've got my notes on all those phone calls, so if we can compare us and I can get the dates and talk about that, we probably can work Okay, it out. the date is on the exhibit list. She says, I understand, I hear what you're saying, I can't compare my notes, but she's got it identified. Number 20 is 924, phone call to Gigliotti. Do you have any idea, Ms. Jensen, kind of what the substance of that phone call is so that maybe it will help Mr. Barasset put it together with his notes? Just a, a, she talks about, that's the phone call where Ms. MacArthur says she feels like Taylor would be most comfortable in Destin. Well, can, we can talk on a break and get this done, because... <clears throat> well, I'd like to, I mean, I really want to make sure it's, if we can do it, um, we're going to have a break, yes. But if, I, if she can tell you right now what the substance is, we're going to sit for two hours. Okay. I mean, I know you've seen the video, and I know you're going to be listening, but you can probably multitask. So the first one, 924, is apparently a phone call where she talks about Taylor being comfortable in Destin. But, okay, the first one that I have, and I don't know what order they're in because they don't have any dates, is fed up with me calling you. I want to run some details behind you. On the last day, you saw Taylor Wright run through the details. So it's Gigliotti saying, Gigliotti are you fed up saying. with me calling you? No, Taylor Wright says that. I mean, no, Ashley Barnes. Oh. oh, okay. Judge, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we probably took notes on different things. <laughs> I took them verbatim, basically, if I could. Um. Well, um, can we step outside and talk to Detective Gigliotti real quick? Because I had him review those phone calls last yep. night.
It's here, and I don't think Ms. Jensen needs to hear this. It's not a news flash, but just a reminder to everybody in the audience, I can do that real quickly. Um, unless you're the media, you should not be using your phone in any way. There should be no recording by anybody except our official media people. Um, you, I think y'all have done a good job so far about not coming and going a lot, but just a reminder. The video is two hours long. You're on notice about that. If you're going to get up, please do it quietly. Um, so I think generally most people have followed the rules. There have been one or two people been told. One person was to told to leave yesterday, and then because he was talking to potentially talking to witnesses, was told not to come back. So people are being taken out um, side, taken outside. But most of y'all have been very well behaved and haven't had any problems. Just keep doing what you're doing, okay? Jensen was proposing that he's going to testify to some of the statements made in the phone call. Right. But if it can't be matched up and there's going to be an objection because the notes aren't matching somehow, then we'll just play the phone calls. matters they're out of order some but we'll do the best we can okay all right let's go ahead and bring the jury and get going everybody can have a seat Jury's in the box. For the record, defendant is present with counsel, assistant state attorney is present. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm giving you an especially bright smile this morning because I was at the dentist at 7 a.m. in this morning, and the last thing they told me after they put the fluoride on my teeth is that I should not drink alcohol for four to six hours. So in spite of the fact I'm spending the day with you people, I'm going to restrain and not do that. How does that sound? Okay, let me ask you my questions. Has anybody done any research on the case? No. Has anybody, um, had anybody talk to you about the case? No. Was anybody texting you and saying, gosh, court TV? No. no. Or WAR, WKRG, or anything? No? I don't think I relied on my husband this morning to read the newspaper, and he said he didn't see anything. Of course, he probably wandered off into the sports section. But as anybody can't be sure, uh, but uh, you haven't read anything, investigated anything, done anything. Everybody's nodding. Uh, how about is there any reason anyone cannot be fair or impartial or anything you need to tell me that would affect your ability to be fair and impartial? No. Thank you all for being here on time. We've been working since 845. Let me tell you what we're doing. We have about two hours and four minutes left of this interview. You do not have to hold it for two hours and four minutes, to put it bluntly. If you need a comfort break, all you have to do is raise your hand, and we'll just stop it just like we did last night and give you a break. My intention today is that we're going to go a little later for your break, um, but we'll break whenever you need it, and then maybe lunch at about 1245, because I wanted to break up the day. If we really go to 6 to 630, I didn't want you to be in here at 1 o'clock thinking, you know, five and a half more hours. That's a long time. So we're going to eat a little later, but you have snacks back there. Everybody good with the plan? But if you need something from me, what, 
raise your hand. Otherwise, we're just watching the video, okay? Ms. Jensen, you may proceed. And I believe this is, um, just to re-announce it, an Exhibit 16, which is a recorded interview at Pensacola Police Department on September 18th, 2017. All right, thank you. So you were there for about how long? Maybe half hour or so. Okay. Because while she was looking for that, I was talking about to James about things that we needed to do and get done and stuff at the office because he helped me out with, you know, moving machines and things like that when I needed to. Um, what were the rest of your plans for today? So where'd you go next? We went back to my house, I believe. So, this is the last day that she yeah. spent with. Oh, um, sorry. So you went back to Ranger. Right. And what were, what was your purpose for going back there? Um, to get the, any of the papers that I have for her and the money and stuff for her. So the money was being kept at your house. Right. How long had the money been being kept there? Um, it was only there for a few a few days. Where was that before that? Taylor had it. Okay. So this whole thing about a safety deposit box of yours, you know, anything about that? Well, Taylor wanted to get a safety deposit box initially, and but she didn't want her name or anything to be on anything that Jeff could find. Sure. So I was like, we'll just keep it and give it to you or whatever because I don't know why she didn't keep it. She has a safe. Yeah, it's odd. Yeah, so it's odd. And I don't know if it had to do with she didn't want cats involved with any. I I don't know. There's hard. It's hard to say what was going through her head because I don't know why she was doing a lot of the stuff that she was doing. So you had the money for? Do you recall what day and how that conversation was brought up? Like, hey. Oh, you're going to keep your ass. It's cool. It was only 20 and it was, then she had other cashier's checks. So it was 20 grand mm -hmm. and other cashier's checks. Right. Do you know how much money in cashier's checks it was? Not really. I didn't really look at them. So you don't know if it was like $500 cashier's checks or $50,000 cashier's checks? My understanding was that they were like large amount checks. Was large because like probably thirty or forty thousand. That's large. That's more than what, large. what I make in a year, so that's pretty large. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's large. Just there's some people are, are different. Yeah. Because she had taken out money, which I don't know what she did with um, before in cashier checks from Navy Federal, um, and she was pretty furious about, actually I was with her that day, she had like an 80 something thousand dollar cashier's check and when was that? Maybe in August. And she um, wanted to get all the cash and they wouldn't give it to her. I don't have that much cash in a bank. Probably not, and so I don't. And I don't know why she wanted it or what you know she was going to do with it or whatever. Do um, you recall when that was? Not specifically, but um. I mean, are we talking like months back or? No, probably sometime in August. Okay. That she went to the bank and was asking for eighty grand. Yeah. Did you take her? I was with her. What bank was that? Maybe federal. Which branch? Um, Davidson Langley. Sure, they probably. Oh, she was really rude, like to the people. Like, I mean, I'm sure they will remember because, like, she was kind of nasty to them. Okay. Did she get any cash that day? She got, I think, fifteen thousand is what they would give her. They put the rest back in more cashier's checks. Mm -hmm. And then my understanding is she went 
the next day and got more cash. Um, I wasn't with her, but that's what they told her she could do, and that's what she was she was doing. So she was just going back, trying to get as much cash as she could out of this cashier's check. I guess, but I don't know what she was doing with it. And all this was in August. Probably in July, August, yeah. And how did the conversation come up with the, with her leaving the money at your house? She just asked me if I would keep it. And how did that go? Yeah, okay, or? I mean, she was always there, so I mean, I really didn't mind. And sure. I mean, our neighborhood is an easy neighborhood. It's we hardly mm -hmm. have any kind of issues or whatever there. But I don't understand why she wasn't putting it in her safe. But she has a safe at Amber's house. Um, um, uh, mm -hmm. And then she was moving it to Cass's. Did she move the safe to Cass's? Mm -hmm. Well, it went there, and but then I don't know why they ended up not taking it out of the truck, but of course now it's all at my office. The, the safe is at your office? Yeah, all that junk is at my office. Do you, do you know what's in that safe? I don't. Like, when we moved it, it was open and popped in. Like when we were trying to put it in the truck, it popped open, and then she ended up closing it. But I don't think there was anything in it because the door popped open. But whether she had all that other cash that she had taken out before in there, I don't know. But it was with her at that house. The one I know. At Empress. At Empress. Okay. Um. Let's go back. You were at the warehouse on Pace. Mm -hmm. um, were y'all were there for about 30 minutes? Where did y'all go after that? Back to my house. Back to your house. Do you recall what route you may have taken? No. Probably very few. Same little back up? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're going there to get what? The cash for her. Okay. So y'all did y'all end up getting that? Yeah. And then where'd you go? We went back to Cass's house. Then you went from Range Green to Berkeley. Um, how long were you at your house at Range Tree? Not very long. Um, maybe twenty minutes or so. And then you went to Berkeley? Right. Was uh, Cass there? No, she wasn't. Okay. Uh, what did y'all do there? I sat in the truck. Taylor went inside. Um, she said she needed to get some papers. And that's, I think, when she got her other bag. And she brought a couple, like, boxes out to the truck. So she went and got a bag. What was in the bag? Like a, when you say a bag, like a garbage bag or a duffel bag? No, like a little, sort of like a tactical bag. Okay. She never opened it up. Okay. She came out, got left. Um, where'd you go after that? We went to right by one of the houses that she was looking at. And where was that at? Off of Yellow Road. Um, do you recall where that house was on Beale Road? I was not paying attention. I was talking on the phone doing work stuff when she was... Could you find that house again if you wanted to? Maybe, but I don't know. Like, I really wasn't paying attention. She just wanted to drive by and see if the cars were there, so I didn't really even pay attention to what house it was. Okay. Um, did she ever mention any names of the person she was working in? No. Um, you said, I think when I talked to you last time, y'all stopped somewhere? At a gas station. Out in Beulah. Right. Was right. that before going to that, by the house or after? It was after. Okay. So, so the house she was looking at was going to be somewhere between Mobile Highway and 
and I'm out on Beulah Road. So how did y'all, do you recall how y'all got from Berkeley to Beulah Road? We went, Mobile Highway. We went probably Fairfield to Mobile Highway. Straight, straight down out. all the way? Yeah. So y'all went down Beulah Road, the house was somewhere between Beulah and 90, or no, Mobile and Mobile, yeah. Yeah, on Beulah, and then y'all did what you had to do with that house? Well, we just drove by. She was looking for a vehicle. Okay. And then you went to... And that's when we went to the gas station there to get a drink. Okay. What in the store? What did y'all do at the store? She was on the phone, and I went in the store, got a drink, and got her another beer. How much had she been drinking that day? She had a, like a Yeti-type cup thing full of beer. I mean, was she, like, intoxicated? Like She didn't seem to be, but, I mean, I don't drink at 10 o'clock in the morning either, so I don't know. Sure. I mean, did she seem like she was getting a little buzzed? Not really. I mean, I didn't think so. Have you ever seen her drinking at that time of day with No. That was odd yeah. behavior. And in fact, I said something to her. I was like, beer at this time of the morning? She was well, like, well, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. I'm like, <laughs> It's a perfect response <laughs> for, for any <laughs> argument. <laughs> well, I'm like, well, thank you. Sweet. It's an awesome argument. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't yeah. even really know her to really drink much. Like, she's never drank much around me, other than maybe, like, a beer with dinner or something like that. Like, I've never seen her, I mean, I've never seen her drunk or... Okay. So... You left the store and went where? That's when we went to go look at the, to see if, I guess the vehicle was at the rest, residence on Phoenix Highway. Okay, so you went down the highway, then you went to the store, then you went and looked at the residence? No, we went, drove past whatever house she was looking at on Beale Road, mm -hmm. and then we went to the store, and then we went to see if that there because the vehicle she was looking for was at a residence Different. on Scenic Highway. On Scenic, okay. I yeah. Sure. Then you'll, how'd y'all get to Scenic? The interstate. That's like the interstate from Beulah? Yeah. The interstate to Beulah to Scenic. Um, did she point out the house? Did y'all pull in the driveway or anything like that? No. I mean, she just wanted to drive by. I mean, I guess she was just looking for a vehicle. Do you recall where that house was? It's north of the interstate, um, somewhere right around Mackey Cove. Yeah. And to your knowledge, this was an insurance type case? That was my understanding. Did you ever feel like she was being, like, deceitful about that? Not really, but I really wasn't paying much attention, you know, you know. And, and the reason I ask these questions is because I... If it's just an insurance type fraud or some guy saying, oh, I hurt my leg, getting a little money, I'm not saying that that person's like harmless, but I would say that there's probably less danger than if she was investigating something else or other things. She's never told me that she's investigated any kind of like infidelity cases or criminal type cases. I know that she said that she was getting, what kind of case did she call it? And you'd have to check with the people that she worked for. I can't remember. Um, she was getting some new type of case, but I don't. I didn't get the impression that this was that case. Okay. Uh, what, whatever she said was to the effect that 
the attorneys, I guess, that she was working for or whatever, where she was going to start doing some other type of case work other than just the insurance stuff. Okay. So, you know, drove by there on scenic, then where? Then we went. That's why we went to the farm. Okay. Now, was the farm something that was a planned thing? No, she just said she wanted to drink a beer. And we had talked about the farm because when they had gone, Kath and Drake and Taylor had gone to visit her mom, I guess, in Tallahassee not that long before. And they were talking about, you know, they have animals and goats and, and all that stuff. And this was a family farm that I had. And so we just she was like, well, let me see, because her mom has stuff like that, and so we just drove out there, and she was just going off steam, I guess, and drinking beer, and <laughs> we were just hanging out. I mean, it really wasn't a very odd day. Yeah. I didn't get the impression that, I mean, she was upset about the Jeff situation, but, like, it wasn't unusual for Taylor to call me and be like, hey, do you just want to come ride around with me today, or whatever. And most of the time I didn't because I had to work, but she'd call and say, I just want to come hang out and skip over and sit at home, I guess, and mm -hmm. whatever. She was a strange girl. <laughs> okay. Um, had y'all made plans or like prior to that day, had y'all made plans of what you were going to be doing that day? Not really. I mean, we talked about her, you know, she wanted to get the money and stuff, good. and she wanted me to review some case documents or something that she had to make sure that she had typed it out right or whatever. But aside from that, um, we were supposed to go pick up the TV, but I don't know. I don't know, Mom. Right, and I don't know what the situation with that was. I knew about a week before there was some issue with money with her not wanting to pay for a deposit or something. There was some bad deal between her and Esley, Amber, um, that she had talked about, but I don't really know what it was. Other than, I, I do know that it had to do with some sort of deposit, and Amber thought that Taylor owed her money. And I think that's why she's still holding the TV. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's why Taylor wasn't wanting to go get the TV that day or not, but there was some issue to that. that and Cass was there when we talked about it. I mean, um, I think they thought that she owed them for electrical or for mess, but sure. whatever it was. Uh, okay. You say that um, that day she'd asked to get that money was part of one of the things that she wanted is to get the money from your place. Right. Um, had she had a, had she asked before that at any point to go get the money? Yeah, and I had been super busy that week because of the <clears throat> what we had done before that the week before, and I had just eight million things going on. She had we we were actually supposed to do it the day that she had the um, box truck moving it, and then. They ended up just doing all that instead of. So that week before, mm -hmm. you just been busy, so you couldn't take her to get the money. And I just, well, I just, she had, she was gonna come by the house. I told her to come by the house, and everybody was just running around and doing whatever. So. And how long was the money at the house? Probably a couple, just a couple weeks. Okay. Do you own a safety deposit box? I don't. Or does Zach have a safety deposit box? I don't know. Okay. Who do y'all bank with? Wells Fargo. Which branch do you use? I use the downtown branch. Where does Zach use? He doesn't really bank, but downtown would be probably where he would go. Or the Bayou branch. Okay. Um, do you, have, do you know anyone that works for Wells Fargo? Randy Ard. Randy Ard? Mm -hmm. Is that a male or female? Male. Randy Ard. Which branch does he work at? The downtown branch. 
Okay. Have you ever visited any other Wells Fargo's or frequented any other Wells Fargo's? Mm, not really. Okay. Um, have you ever been to Wells Fargo out in Bellevue? I have. Okay. Do you have you ever had a safety deposit box there? No. They closed theirs, and that's the one that Taylor wanted to go get a safety deposit box at. But then all this stuff went crazy with the dress situation. Okay. Do you know anyone that works there? I don't. Okay. When was the last time you've been to the Wells Fargo over in Bellevue? Um, probably the week that that we were there, Taylor and I went by there because she wanted to find out about the, when they closed the safety deposit boxes there. What did they say? Uh, I think they said July. They closed it in July. Mm -hmm. When did you learn that they had closed it? That, I mean, I don't think at that branch, so anything that I would do would be downtown. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why she wanted to make it seem like she had a safety deposit box. That's what's very peculiar to me. That's why I'm asking these questions, because it's come out that there was a safety deposit box apparently in your name. And I don't, I don't care if you have one or not. It's not that I. It's just, it's peculiar that that folks are telling us that there was one, and that she apparently she has been telling people that There's she no has one. one. But, but she wanted to get one, and then she wanted to get uh, us to get one together. So I don't know why the whole deal really occurred. Why would she want you two to get one together? That's odd. I have no idea. Everything that she does is kind of <laughs> But, I mean, she would call me and be like, well, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's, and then she'd call and change her mind. And she'd be like, well, I'm going to text you this. Okay. I mean, she, so everything, the only way I can take it is she was very, very upset about what was going on with court. And I, I mean, I know she was trying to hide money from the just situation, but... And, and understand, that's a civil matter. That's not something that we're concerned about. Oh, I know. I don't care if she was hiding a million dollars from Jeff. I'm not Jeff. No, I know. I mean, she's not hiding money from me. Yeah, but it, <laughs> like, I wouldn't have to have anything to do with this if she wasn't trying to... I mean, this is a pain in the ass for me, sure, you know? Sure, sure. All of us. Well, I mean, it really is, because, like, now I'm stuck with all of her stuff at my office, and... You know, even before all this goes on, it's, she's got the truck for a week and this and that. I mean, just trying to help her. And, of course, the story that I get is a very solid story about how Jeff's taken all this money and he took all this stuff from her. And now she's, just, you know, trying to hide it and move it and do all kind of just shady stuff with it. And, like... She's overinflating credit cards and stuff, like putting extra money on credit cards. I mean, who, who does that? Like paying more. Right, like deal. like paying more than. So if you owe five hundred dollars total, she pays more than five. Like two thousand or something. Just adding. So she has like fifteen hundred dollars credit. credit. Yeah. That's just and we may not have told you this. So. What you tell us stays in here. Okay. Well, our, our main goal is to find. No, and I understand. Yeah. She just. We're not. It, it, I don't know. You don't want to appear you are that like you're trying to hold back anything or don't want to tell something that's going to be embarrassing. Whatever, just whatever you tell us stays in here, and we're not trying to. It, I guess we are trying, trying into y'all's relationship because we want to know everything we can know about oh, her. I totally understand. It's just we want to find because her. I. And it's hard for me because I don't. I guess I didn't know who she was until a lot of this, because what I knew her to be was one thing, and now what I'm finding out is 
We're doing that. Something totally different. She, she appears to, to confide in you a lot, though. Well, and that's, a, and that's a thing that, like, I don't understand. Like, we, I thought we were very close. But then yet, I don't know about this ginger situation with Alexi until the day it comes up. But I, I didn't know her to be, like, to lie to me. You know, when she was, in fact, that day that all that happened, she was like, you know, I felt bad for Cass, but it hurt me that I lied to you about the drugs and whatever else. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not anything that you can't fix. I mean, it's, you did drugs a couple times, okay, it's bad, but stop. Was, it, was her husband home then? Did he hear all this? No, he wasn't there that day. Did, like, he, did he, he know every detail of y'all's relationship and last time y'all hung out and all that stuff? He probably doesn't because he gets good thing, angry with me. Yeah. He would get angry with me for hanging out because he's like, stop helping her, stop helping her, stop helping her. And I'm like, because I just didn't see her as a bad person. I mean, maybe she you may not be. She may you know, not be. But maybe, maybe I was too naive, whatever. I don't know. I just felt like the way that she put everything to me was like she was just, trying to get her life together, to get her kid, to get back on her feet, and that Jeff had done so much, you know, to her to take away all of this money that she had and everything else. It just was, and so, of course, I feel bad for her, and I'm like, okay, well, do whatever you need me to do, you know, I'll help you, because I feel like she was kind of alone other than, you know, Cast and she wasn't course, away. I've known her, you know, a little bit longer, you know, than Cass has, and so, you know, I was willing to help her, but then half the stuff that I thought to be true now I find out isn't true, but, or allegedly isn't true. I mean, I don't know, because everybody has such a, it's like a wild roller coaster of stories, and I'm just like, are you kidding? You know, every day Cass will call and be like, well, this is the new thing for today, and this is the new person of the day, and no, her dad's not dead, and no this, and I'm like, yeah. how do you piece through it? Yeah. Um, just to finish up that last day, um, <clears throat> you went and took this scenic highway north, and then from there you went to the farm. Right. The farm is, wh is where? It's off of Highway 90 in Milton. And that's the address you provided me? Right. And who owns that farm? Um, my aunt. Okay. I think, did you send me that number? I did. I believe you did, yeah. Highway 90 in Milton owns the farm. Okay. Uh, and y'all were out there for how long? Mm, probably maybe an hour. Maybe an hour? Yeah. And then from there you went? Back to my house. Back to your place. Uh, do you recall what route roughly? In the interstate. Fairfield. Interstate. Back to Rainy Street. So Taylor was still with you? Yeah. So and you two were alone? Yeah. And when I get back to Rain Tree, can you kind of describe to me what the mood was like, the conversation was like? She was fine. She just said that she wanted to go have a beer and that she was going to get an Uber to take her to go have a beer. And I said, well, I can just drop you back off at your car. And she's like, well, I don't want to drive. Mm -hmm. So she denied your assistance, I guess, your help? Yeah, I mean, because I was willing to take her. I mean, she doesn't live far from my house, so... Did she ever mention anything about having a friend come pick her up? She didn't, but I mean, I couldn't tell you if she was going to or, you know what I mean, if she really had an Uber come or if it was somebody that was picking her up. Mm -hmm. Because when we got back, Zach and I were supposed to go out to dinner. We ended up going to, and I had to go pick up my Jeep. That's why I was in his truck, because my, the lady that works for me had my Jeep that day. Um, and of course, she's been avoiding Zach because they're, you know, he doesn't want anything to do with her. And so I went inside, and when I came back out, she had already gone. Okay. Where's all her bags at? Well, she 
left the stuff in my car in Zach's truck. Um, and when I didn't hear from her later, you know, until Cass it didn't hear from her. And then so I called Cass. I'm like, hey, I have this stuff that she left in here. And I knew it was expensive stuff. I'm just off top cheap. So I'm not leaving stuff like that in it, you know. Um, so I'm like, hey, can I bring this stuff over to you? Because she left the stuff in my truck. And so that's when I took it over to Cass. So what was her attitude like? Cass's? She just was kind of irritated with Taylor. But, I mean, everybody kind of was because she was... I didn't think anything of it because, like I said, she had been drinking all day and was kind of like, you know, just in one of those moods and saying that, you know, she just wanted to chill out or whatever. And I don't know if she was frustrated with just moving into Cass's. She was really torn about moving into Cass's. Um, not because I think that they had any issues, but, you know, they, there was all the infidelity mess. Mm -hmm. And Taylor, and I told Cass this, I didn't, you know, wasn't trying to hurt her feelings, but had, and I had a conversation, because Taylor can be wild. Cass is not wild. Cass is not a like, party person. She's very quiet. She's pretty... And, you know, I know Taylor to want to go party and have fun and whatever. I don't know. And I, so I asked her, I said, you know, when she was talking to me about moving in with Cass, she said, like, what do you think? And I'm like, well, are you going to stay? You know, because I've seen her, you know, bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce between people. It's kind of a big step to move in with somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. And especially coming off like the infidelity stuff, I mean, like, okay, are you going to stay? Is this just another little deal? And she's like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to try. But, I mean, Cass is the most reserved person I've ever seen her around. I didn't have a lot of faith that they would stay together, True. just based on Taylor's behavior, not Cass's behavior. Um, I think that Cass is a good person, you know, and she's probably really good for Taylor. Taylor kind of tends to go to the wild side of more of a fun side, and so that's why I asked her, I'm like, you know, if you're going to move in, are you going to settle down? She said, I'm going to try, so. Has she expressed any interest in leaving Cass at any time? She just. Or was unhappy she was, or? I don't. I don't think Taylor was 100%. I know that she was really irritated about the house stuff. I got the impression that it probably wasn't going to be long term, only because She's like, she wants me to pick out this and this and this, and it's not my house, and I'm not going to be there. And I'm like, what do you mean you're not going to be there? She's like, well, you just can't say. And I'm like, but Taylor, this is what we're talking about. Like, are you staying? What, you know? I don't know. And this is um, an awkward question, um, but again, like Chad said, this all stays in this room. Um, had you and Taylor ever, yeah. had she ever come on to you or? Taylor asked me one time if I would have a threesome with her and some guy. And I'm like, no thank you. And when was that? Uh, probably a week before that day. So recent? Yeah. Do you know who the guy was? I don't she say? know. She didn't say. Did she show you a picture? No, I just told her, like, I'm like, not my thing. Yeah. Um, any other times she brought up that? Not to me. I mean, she's never been out of the way with me or anything before. And that was approximately, so she had around the first okay. and how did that conversation we were all like hanging out or she like pick you up call you and say 
No, we were together. I think it was, it may have been the day that we were moving stuff. It was the day or the day before that we were moving all of our stuff. She just randomly popped up with this, or was there was like a conversation leading up? No, it was just like, hey, by the way. Think she's being serious, or think she's? Oh, she was serious. <laughs> she was. She was serious. Yeah, for sure. Cause they caught me off guard. I was like, what? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. And again, this statement oh, I here, know. you know. This is this is for purposes of locating her. Oh, um, it's not for purposes of us uh, sharing with anyone else. Period. In fact, it doesn't even have to go on any sort of documentation. Um, if it helps us locate her, and we find her, and she's all good. How we got that step's really relevant. Um, she said nothing about the guy's name or how old he was, or white or black, Hispanic or anything like that. She just said he he's hot and her type. Okay. What's her type? Tim, the only way that I know that is, like, I know that she does like, like, super buff, like, military type, you know, hard body type people. <laughs> Tall, muscular. Then those are the types of people that she showed me, like, when she was going out with people in Destin, that she was. Scene. Um, do you recall if she had spoke to a guy that day? I didn't really pay much attention to her. Like, honestly, like, Taylor talks so much. She is a very, like, over-talker. I just kind of sometimes just tune her out and go on about her business. Because I get a lot of business. Well, you see how my phone is. Yeah. I, I have a lot of, like, constant whatever. And so... I, a lot of times when we're together or whatever and she just you know would say she wanted company or whatever she just stopped by the house if I was there and I you know still continue doing my thing and she would do hers she didn't even come by the house like if she was bored and trying to type a report or whatever and swing by there and just type it just so she wasn't sitting in castes by herself or at athletes by herself and I mean I didn't mind it just has she ever mentioned the cats being jealous that y'all are hanging out so much? No. Has, has your husband ever expressed concern or it, it, no, not interest but just jealousy that y'all hang out a lot? No, he just didn't want me to hang out with her. Like, I don't see Zach as being jealous of me hanging out with her. Have you ever really. used y'all as being intimate? No. Okay. No. Would he, would he care if he found out that y'all were, or heard from someone that y'all were? No, he wouldn't care. He'd probably be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, he's a guy. I mean, come on. <laughs> He'd be like, can I watch, you know, or something like that. I mean, realistically, that's what he would do. I guess we are probably, we have to look at every aspect and every angle to see. No, I do. have to. Because, again, if it turns out that some, some, one of these 10,000 people on Facebook made a suggestion or a comment and we didn't even follow up on that and it turned out to be something real or some some person called in with the lead and one of these 10,000 people called in with the lead. Um, well, that's the weird thing about like that person that like half called that lady back. I don't know if she told you when we were, she and I were sitting there at my house and the lady's like, this is Taylor. And then she's like, oh, this is Maria. And we're like, what? Mm -hmm. And she, and Kath is like, because Kath had it on speakerphone, and she's like, well, have you seen her? She's not here right now, or she said something to that effect. It was never like, no, I don't know her, or no, like, who are you talking about? It was just a really weird conversation. I think that's the one that ended up turning out to be something that was, ended up asking for money. Yeah, she did. So I'm going to get a bunch of those. I mean, it was yeah. really strange, but and then, we happened, she just happened to be at my house at the time, Cass, and we were sitting there listening to it, and we're like, you know, what the hell? Yeah, that, and that's why I don't always necessarily agree with these Facebook posts. I guess Brian, I'm sure Brian had good intentions. Oh, I'm sure, um, but... But you can see the problem that it can stir up, because now there's, there's all these people that we have to chase down that could be just looking for attention or looking for some, you know, well, thing. I mean, to me and Cass, it was like that, too, because we're like, most people would say, if you call them, hey, is this Taylor? Or do you know Taylor? No, I don't know who that is. You have the wrong number. I'm sorry. Or 
something to that effect. But the conversation was much longer than that. So we're thinking, okay, well, is this the other number? Or is, you know, is this somebody that knows her or whatever? And so we leave there thinking, like, okay, well, maybe this is. And then Cass later calls and tells me that this person starts asking her for money. I'm like, what in the world, you know? I mean, don't waste everybody's time. Well, you can rest assured that th that is exactly what's going to happen when you have this many crazy people yes, do this stuff. Easy. You say there's not a safety deposit box. Obviously, we're going to follow up with the most oh, sure. see. Um, we're not going to find one in your name or your husband's name. No. Or one that you've gone to or they've allowed you to have access to. Okay. Do you know who harmed Taylor? No, I don't. I don't know that she's been harmed. Did you harm her? No, I didn't. Do you know if Cass has harmed her? No. I wouldn't think so. Like, I don't, I don't believe Taylor's been harmed. I just, I think Taylor's doing what Taylor does. But, I don't know, you know, I, the only thing that I can think, Taylor is a very tough person. She's always come across as being tough and never made it anything other than, you know, she's always carrying weapons, whether it's knives or guns or whatever. Um, she's not an easy target. She seems to always have everything together to a degree. The only thing I worry about is with the drug situation. Like, I wouldn't even, if I didn't know about the drug situation, I wouldn't be worried about her. I would say, Taylor's doing what Taylor does. But then that lifestyle becomes a different group of people. Sure. Which is what I worry about with her. Sure. Yeah, we don't know that she ever had intentions on leaving. Maybe she wanted to go have fun, and then someone found her with a bag full of cash. You know, and that's that's why we we have to follow down every single avenue and ask all these. Talk about questions. all the vacation spots and all that stuff. And you talked to her about it. Mm -hmm. We didn't get into that. Did she ever talk about where she would go if she wanted to hide? She never talked to me about hiding. She talked to somebody. I don't remember who. Maybe it was Cass that she could just disappear if she wanted to. The only places I know her to go is Vegas, Savannah, Georgia, Destin. I think her mom lives somewhere around Tallahassee. I know she has friends in Jacksonville. I know that on her way to North Carolina when she took Drake back, she wanted to stop in Jacksonville, Florida and Savannah, Georgia. And I don't think Cass wanted her to visit whoever was in either of those two towns. In Jacksonville or Savannah? Or Savannah. And so she said that she wasn't. And so she told me that she was not going to go there and I think ended up saying, does she have a home in Atlanta, Georgia? I've never heard of her having any connections to Atlanta. Okay, well she told me when she was going to take Drake back that she was going to stay at her house in Atlanta that's just outside of Atlanta. Where is Savannah, Georgia in relation to? It's right near Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, you're just like, on the other side of the state line. Yeah. It's south and to the east of the So not near Atlanta? No. No, no. I mean, that's on the other side of the state. <clears throat> At her house. She seemed like it was another liar. She seemed like she was... I didn't know Taylor to be a liar, though, <laughs> until all of this comes out. So I... Okay, let me say this. I didn't know Taylor to be a liar except for the fact that I knew she was trying to hide all this money and do all this stuff. I know she was going to try to go to Jeff's supervisors and stuff and get her son back. And so I guess she had evidence against him, whatever it was with that. And she was trying to prove that he was unfit for the 
Um, so she gets the son back. Is that possible, you think? You think she'd be able to prove that? I don't. Does she ever tell you what made him unfit? Well, I mean, she... The story that I get is that Jeff was the aggressive one. And that he was the one that would be, you know, like volatile and violent with her. But now I'm hearing that it was Taylor that was actually that person. So, I don't know. I mean, she told me that he's taken, supposedly she got like a $250,000 settlement from some car wreck she had. Taylor? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, well, she, this is what she told me about the, the, um, it, the court case. That, that she had gotten a two hundred fifty thousand dollars settlement from her ins insurance company on some accident that she had, and then the court said that because she put it in a joint account with Jeff, it was commingled. Yep. And then he took like a hundred and sixty thousand of it prior to the court date, and so then because it was together, then they had to split, I guess, whatever was left in that account. So you had to even more. Right. And so that she was furious about. And then I guess they do, what made me not question that Atlanta house thing is because I, I say they, they do have houses together. She told me that they have multiple properties that are to be sold. In their divorce? Right? Yeah. So hmm. I, I guess I just assumed that that Atlanta house was one of them. Um, I think he has a home, and but I, my understanding is they own multiple homes that are now supposed to be sold because of the divorce. Are they collecting rent on those homes right now? That's my understanding, that Jeff is the one that's collecting the rent on the homes. For the Do you know if there are any vacant homes? Never really mentioned. No. Well, she did tell me that John was getting the rent for them. So, I mean, she never said that they were, you know, having to pay out anything on these homes. But. She ever talked about uh, leaving the country to go on vacation or anything? No. I mean, her, the things that she would talk about mostly, Vegas, Atlantic City, because I think there's an aunt that lives up north somewhere. She's got a gambling problem. She does have a gambling problem. Have you ever worked with her in casinos? I didn't. I actually, the weekend that she was going to take me to my 40, and when I, uh, please don't judge me when I tell you the story. Oh you're God. not going to even believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me stop you. I've been doing this for almost 15 years, and I've been invest talking to people here for nine years. There's nothing you can say that I will not it's believe. Really, it's really not bad, but it's really like, the craziest bunch of mess you've ever heard. Taylor, a, fr a friend of mine that's the with, that was with me, um, Taylor decides that she wants to take me to um, New Orleans for my 40th birthday, because I just want to turn 40. And I'm like, okay, well, sure, we'll go. And she plans the weekend, gets a hotel, all this. It's supposed to be me and Taylor and my friend Audrey and Kat. And no, Audrey and I are not together. She's been <laughs> but and I don't, you know, there's nothing between Cass or Taylor or Audrey. Or, but you know, I was just friends with her, so she. And I don't have a lot of female friends because shit like this, they're dramatic, <laughs> and I don't want any part of it. I am not a shopper. I don't want to, you know, go to the mall. I don't want to do any of that bullshit. So, she plans this. Well, my friend Audrey, the Friday before um, we're supposed to go to New Orleans, she calls me on the phone and she's like, hey, you need to come to my house. My mom's dead. Oh, I go to her house. Her mom had passed away in her sleep from a heart attack. Well, Audrey was supposed to go with us. And I had to have a busy work week, too, so it was like, I told Taylor, I said, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know that I'm going to be able to make it. I'm like, I am swamped at work. Now, Audrey, I don't think, can go because her mom just died. So, you know, you and Kath go have fun 
I don't think I can go. She's like, well, you know, please try to come, please try to come, please try to come. I'm like, we'll figure it out. I'll do the best I can. But I know I can. I'll leave on Friday because I just have too much work to do. So I'll try to get up and come Saturday morning. And if Audrey can get a babysitter for the night, maybe it'll be good for her to get out because, you know, her mom did just die, whatever. So Audrey gets a babysitter. We go to leave. We're leaving. We get across the concentrate bridge. Audrey goes, you got to pull over. I think I'm having a heart attack. I'm like, what? <coughs> She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, do you want me to stop or do you want me to get you to the hospital? I'm like, you want to call an ambulance to you or what? She's like, no, just go. So I'm driving from the Flush Dream Bridge to, towards downtown New Orleans at like 95, 100, hoping that a cop oh, stops Lord. me. Yeah, because then I'd be like, take her, you know, do <laughs> something. <laughs> but of course, that at that point, no, I don't do pull over. But luckily, at Canal Street, University Medical Center is right there. Sure. And I go to New Orleans a lot, so I knew where it was. And Tulane Medical Center is just right there. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to the hospital. I know where there's one. We pull in there. And I don't know what time it was. We pull in there, take Audrey inside. They end up admitting her. Her gallbladder has ruptured or whatever. And she is having, like, a gallbladder attack and has gallstones and a duct. And... All this is her mom's funeral. This was the Saturday. Her mom's funeral was the Monday. She had surgery on Tuesday. She missed her mom's funeral because she is stuck in New Orleans in the hospital. She didn't even get to come home until the following Wednesday. So my trip to New Orleans for my 40th birthday was hanging out with friends in the hospital because that night, Captain Taylor came to the hospital to see her. I ended up leaving the hospital at like 3 o'clock in the morning, went to the room, slept, went back to the hospital, hung out with Audrey. Then I, of course, we planned on going home on Sunday, so I had to go home because I had stuff for work. Then on Monday when I got done with my work stuff, I drove back over to check on Audrey in the hospital, drove back to Pensacola. In one day? Oh, yeah, but you see what happened? Well, what, what happened was her, her dad couldn't come to her. Nobody could because her mom's service was that day. So she had no family that could even go over there and check on her. So the poor girl stuck in another town in a hospital by herself, you know, facing surgery. And I'm like, well, I'll drive over. Here I go. You know, I went to the store, got her some Sprite and Jello and whatever else she could eat, toothbrush, and drove back. <laughs> And then finally, the next thing her dad was able to go, so I, it took it off my relief, <laughs> you know. But, so that was our trip. But the point of that story was, I know that the Friday night, I wasn't there, I know that Taylor and Kath had spent a bunch of time at Harrah's. And my impression was that Taylor probably did spend a lot of time at Harrah's in New Orleans because when I was coming over, she was like, where are you going to park? And their hotel was at the Westin Canal Place, um, and I, right across the street from the Harris. It is. But they have really good parking there because of the mall. You know, there's the thing. And so I'm like, I'm going to park at the parking under the hotel. And she's like, well, it's expensive. She's like, I can get you free parking at Harris. And so that's what made me think, okay, well, she probably has been there multiple times if she can get a bunch of comps, you know. But we were staying at the Westin, so why not park at the Westin? I mean, you just get in. It's the same elevators that go from the mall to the hotel, so right. it's much easier, obviously, than parking at Harris and dragging your bags across. And of course, this is the conversation we had before. I know that I'm actually not going to the hotel. I'm going to University Medical Center with Audrey. <laughs> but that was the impression. I know they spent a lot of time that Friday and Saturday at Harris in New Orleans. But that's not the first time that I've heard, you know, her want to gamble, and that's been sort of and ongoing. Did, have you ever gone for a trip to see them? Mm -hmm. How about to like a, the dog track in Pensacola? I know that she does go to the dog track in Pensacola, but I've never been with her. Has she ever spoken about winning any large amounts of money out there? She never talked about She ever talked about losing a lot of money out there? Mm -hmm. How about Biloxi? Did you ever go over to Biloxi? You know, casino she ever go to in Biloxi? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I didn't know. At more. That's like when Queen Cruise. Did you go there? I've never heard of her talk about going there. I don't think you can play cards. You can't play cards there. It's just, just video, video, video right. being um, slot machines and things or whatever. How, how many times have you gone to New Orleans with them? I've just been just that one time that 
Yeah. Okay. I don't think we were How, how old were you? Would have been in the room with him for how long? I probably got to the room around three o'clock in the morning, and I think Audrey called me at eight in the morning to tell me that they they were scheduling her for surgery. So you were there long? No, I was probably there like five hours. Slept for a little bit, got a shower, and went back to the hospital. And there was just you three there. Mm -hmm. I do know that they met somebody the night before, and I asked Cass this, and she said she didn't seem, seem to think that Taylor knew this person, but he was buying them bottles and stuff at some strip club, and I guess he called them to hang out the next day to you um, when they were there, but like I said, I wasn't, like I didn't even get to eat in New Orleans, I, <laughs> really, I was doing the hospital thing, but all day, or for that Friday, and then during the day on Saturday. Who paid for the room, didn't you? Taylor. Did you know what form of payment she used for insurance? I went there when they checked in, and I went there when they checked out. I was just there for that little bit of time, early Sunday morning until a little bit later Sunday morning. Were they awake when you woke up? Mm -hmm. Any other purchases you recall her making, Taylor, for you or y'all at any place? In New Orleans? Anywhere. Any time over the past year you've hung out with her, any time you can recall she took to cover the bill and used a card or some other form of payment? A lot of times, like, Taylor would pay for dinner or things like that. The reason I ask this is I want to know what other cards that she may, be having, may have access to and may be using. Um, I don't know, but I wouldn't have paid attention. Taylor used cash a lot. Obviously, that's difficult to track. Um, I know that she told me she had a Navy Federal account and Wells Fargo account and I think a USAA account. No. Is that a bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to write that one down, so I'll take a look at that. Yeah, no, I've never heard that one. Um, <coughs> so I'll forget. But, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, like, when we went to that Alabama game, I mean, we paid for the hotel or whatever, and I'm sure that Taylor bought, like, dinner or whatever else when we were up there for us, because we, you know, paid for the hotel. And was she free spirit around your husband, like, walk around, and was, or was she really, like, cover herself up when you're all in the hotel room? Oh, she would cover herself up. She was pretty, um, pretty was reserved around Zach. That's when her and Zach were getting along. Right. Yeah. It wasn't until the past probably two months that he's been just really put out with her. But once I told him about, like, knowing about the drug use when she came to us that day, he was like, no. Yeah. Is there any reason or anything that could have happened that would lead um, Cass to think that you and Taylor were involved? No, not at all. I wouldn't think so. I mean, we've never, we haven't ever been that. I wouldn't think that, that Cass would think that either. Okay. I mean, Cass has never treated me in any way like that. Any other reasons you can think that Cass would be upset with her other than, of course, the infidelity? Just that. I know that, I know that Cass really, in fact, I didn't have Cass's phone number until after that occurred. And then she would check with me, like, if she knew Taylor was with me and say, like, you know, is she with you or whatever. Um, but... I know that Cass was concerned the day that, like I told you that day that I had Drake and that I had to bring him to Cass because Taylor wasn't anywhere around when she was supposed to be. Um, and Cass said something about it later, you know, that she still didn't show up even though she kept saying, oh, I'm sure I'm around the corner, I'm sure I'm around the corner. So, but I know Cass 
questioned, was still nervous about what Taylor was doing. Because I think that it caught her off guard. It caught me off guard. We didn't, I didn't expect it. But, but I didn't really get into their life, you know what I mean? Um, one odd thing that I think is odd that I told Kath, and I sort of felt bad about it, because, you know, I didn't... First of all, I thought Taylor was going to be home that next day. Um, the Saturday after the Friday, I was supposed to go to a wedding. Taylor, in fact, that Friday, we talked about, she asked me, hey, are you going to this wedding? And I said, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah. And she's like, well, can I come? And I'm like, well, I guess so. And she's like, okay. And <clears throat> the reason she wanted to go to the wedding is because Jessica Wood was going to be at that wedding. Okay. Okay. So, because it was Jimmy Tate and Christy Berry's wedding and it was all golf. So, I mean, did you end up going to the wedding? I did, yeah. Um, obviously, she wasn't there. Taylor right. wasn't there. Jessica was there. Sure. Um, did you talk to Jessica? I didn't. I mean, I may have to hey. Sure. But, um... She wasn't aware of anything that may have been going on that she hadn't been heard of from that night before? No, it didn't seem like... I mean, everybody there was doing their own thing. In fact, I'd text Taylor the next day and ask her, you know, are you coming to the wedding? When I heard from her and, um... Of course, I didn't hear from her, but... But I, I thought it was odd because if she's going to be with Kath, why are you trying to get to a place where Jess is going to be? Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of why I asked the question earlier. Had, had you, even if in your mind there was it, there was no intent to show like affection or interest in in, in Taylor. Is there anything that you did that, that could have been perceived that way? Maybe so. On this case, like, Taylor is a hugger. You know, like, she'll hug you, hug you, kiss you by or whatever, and be like, oh, let me on the phone or whatever like that. Um, but I'm from the South. That doesn't really shock me mm -hmm. people, so... Any interactions in person where... Um, Cass was around. I mean, she would always hug me by and stuff like that. Did you ever see Cass kind of get or appear bothered or anybody? Or do you think Cass would show that she was bothered if she was? I don't know her well enough, but I just know Cass would be very sort of consistent and stable. Now, I mean, it did bother Cass when I told her about um, Taylor wanted to go to the wedding with Jessica, you know, being there, but... So there was a huge dollars. In fact, like, um, the day, that day, Taylor asked me if I could, if she could come to a wedding with me. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then I find out that the reason she wants to go to the wedding is because Jessica Wood's going to be at the wedding. Well, and I guess this is Tatum. Tatum's wedding yeah. over there? Yeah, I think pictures of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. But see, she knew that Jess would be at the wedding because Jess and Christy were together. Right. So, but she really wanted to go to that wedding. And, like, basically invited herself to come with me because... We were going to the Did wedding. Husband go with you? He ended up going. He wasn't. He hadn't planned on going. He was had to go to the. Um, I don't know what he was doing. There's something he had to do. Anyway, there was a time that he didn't think he was going, but he ended up going. And she wanted to go. I was like, I guess so. But now, was it like? Assume that she was just going there to see Wood, or did she actually express that? Oh, she told me that. I'm going there, and I want to see you. Jessica. Was Jessica going with a date as well? I don't know. I mean, I saw Jess there, but, I, I mean, she may have, like, walked by the table and said hi or whatever, but I didn't really pay much attention. I mean, yeah. Zach and Jess are friends. Like, I don't, I just know her from the few times that I saw her with Taylor, and when we dropped her off at her house once or twice. When she lived with Jess. 
escalator. How are we doing on the phone? Uh, it's still working. Yeah, I guess you probably don't delete a lot of stuff either, do you? Sorry? That's okay. I'm trying to get it done. It's, it's working. Mm. It's chugging along. That's, that's, it could be good, though, because if she contacted you nine, ten months ago, who knows? We'll be able to pull that number. Um, anyone else you can think of that she showed interest in or mentioned lately? Obviously, this Wood character who she used to date, she says she's shown interest. I don't, and, and Cass, you have to ask Cass this who she told. She told somebody, somebody has told Cass since all this has occurred, that she said that she would leave Cass and go back to Jessica. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't remember who Pretty. Cass told me, told her. I can't remember if we talked about this, we may have, we talked about a lot since we've been here. Uh, guys that she may have been pulling around with. Does the name Justin or Jake or Jack or any of that sound familiar, like somebody she may have been talking to? I've never heard that name before from her. Nothing like that. Somebody named Russell, maybe? Last name, maybe? Yeah. Is she nobody in Mobile? Now, I'm not super up to date on all these uh, like dating websites and hookup sites, but to your knowledge, was she a part of, of any of these like hookup sites? Or? She's never mentioned them to me. Do you know how her and Cass met? I think they met through a mutual friend. Have you ever known Taylor to be uh, at Tinder, which means that she ever talked about him. She never talked to me. Uh, plenty of fish in particular. Mm. If someone was going to hurt her, who, who do you think would do it? Or who do you think would have done it? I don't know anybody that would want to hurt her. Who do you think would have the most to gain or the most amount of doing it? I mean, obviously, Jeff is the only person really that has any real interest in. I mean, that's the battle that she was going through. Um, but then, like I said, you know, I hear from her that he's the violent one, and then I hear from what he's told Kat that she's the violent one. You know, I don't know. Um, I mean, Taylor's always been very one of the people that wants to appear tough, act tough. I mean, she, you know, tells me about all the SWAT training she has and all her martial arts training and this and that and, you know, she's super badass and whatever. And, but that's how she wants to come across, you know. Like, if you look at her life, it's like that. Like, if you're in her car, everything's tactical. Everything's like, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? It's all like yeah. super or whatever. And that's just how she wants people to see her. You know, there's not a... There's not a real soft side to Taylor. It's all. So I was just gonna ask, have you seen her soft side, her girly? Yeah, she's gonna have yeah. a girly, girly, girly side. I saw it once, and and it was insane. And I told her this. It was the day, and it was just recently, the day that Cass's um, brunch for her birthday. And I don't know why she came by my house to change. I don't know how this occurred. Jack was furious about it because he's like, why the bitch come in my ear? Mm -hmm. well, that sounds like, I don't even know your husband. It's like the 10 minutes I spoke with him. That's like he a holds good nothing back. He has zero filter. It's just. Most cops don't have filter. He has none. None. Most cops don't. And um, so I don't know why she didn't change at her house or whatever. It doesn't matter. But she comes by and she's like, hey. Which dress should I wear? And I'm looking at her like, are you on crack? You don't wear dresses. And she's putting on these like dresses and she has like four of them that she like just bought. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're gonna wear a dress? And it was, that was really odd. I'm like, I mean, I said it to her because I'm like, this is weird. I've never seen you in a dress or tried to look like a girl. I mean, most of the time she, 
she looks like a guy. She has on like board shorts and she comes across like she doesn't ever appear like soft or womanly or everything's just always hard. Is she the controller of her intense? Oh, she be the dominant for one sure. In the she would probably not want it to appear that way, but a hundred percent she. Because Taylor thinks that for sure she's smarter than everybody else. She just is that way. Um, that's always the way that, you know. Well, she's trying to hide right now. She's doing a pretty good job. She's pretty smart. smart. <laughs> she, she's not the dumbest person I've dealt with. Oh, I don't think certain. she's dumb at all. But, I mean, she's, but that's something that, I mean, she will talk about. I mean, she's very proud of her intelligence. She's very proud of everything that she's done. She's very proud of being a cop. She's very, you know, whatever and i oh i do remember now what she told me about that nice little pd like i guess she was on a case and she made contact with some officer because i guess she was like hanging around some area or whatever and she was like she said to him we're in the same field or something to that degree degree and she told me that nice didn't hire her because she lied and said that she was in that field I guess because he had made a complaint about her. Because I guess she... Now, Taylor will get very, like, aggressive about some things. Like, you can ask Kath, there was a situation where they wouldn't put bacon on a donut, and she goes, like, nuts about it. And like I said, like, at the bank that day, she was furious with those people because they wouldn't do what she wants. And Taylor was telling me the story that, I guess that, the contact she had with the officer or whatever was kind of to see to some degree or whatever and I guess he made a complaint because at the time that she was trying to get on there or whatever. So she's confrontational but anything from donuts to whatever. Do you know if she was trying to get on with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? She hasn't mentioned it to me. You know, she has any friends that work there? She mentioned if any FDLE or any friends she knows there? Contacts? Ever working for them? Doing any kind of work? Contracts with them? Has she ever gotten an Uber for y'all? No. I think they did in New York, maybe? But. The only time I've ever used Uber was in Washington, D.C. Who do you think paid for the Uber or the Uber? I have no idea. And who all would have been the ones who would have ordered it? Would have been out of who? Obviously, you didn't. No, I wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. She said they were going out of town and they could take an Uber, but I don't know that they ever, ever did it. I mean, they did have Cass's car. They drove Cass's car over there, so I don't know what they ended up doing. Do you know if she has an Uber account on her phone? I've never looked at her phone. She, like I said, she has it all like, locked down. <laughs> but that's just the way she is, like everything. Like, she keeps her tampons in an ammunition box. Alrighty. Yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> All things practical. Yeah, you never know. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what do you think we can find her? I don't know. Cool. My, my gut says Dustin. I don't think she's far. I think she would have gotten her. I believe that she probably has more friends in Dustin than she has told us about. I mean, she lived there for quite some time. Has she ever <laughs> talked about, like, how she would dispose of a body? Have you talked about any of that stuff yet? No. Taylor always jokes about, like, putting people at a pink farm. What was that going to do? I don't know. 
have a pig. Your piggy pig. But I met one. He doesn't eat anything, but he's like. That was pretty cool. It's this work. He was supposed to be this one. I understand for why you're saying pigs will eat humans if they're. I would believe it because. Chopped up and stuff. My pig eats something all day long in my yard. And what it is, I don't know. Because he, he literally was like this, and then like two or three days later, his belly was like this. I mean, it looked like he blew up a balloon. I'm like, what is he eating? Because I'm feeding him like a handful of dog food. And he's like this. But he eats all day. <laughs> what did that happen? I mean, just like recently. I mean, like it didn't take him but like a month and a half to get like that. He went from like this to Lord. what he looks like now. I mean, he just, like all day he eats something in the yard, but I don't know what it is that he's... I mean, I know they root around or whatever, but it's common. Why don't you know? Yeah, really. Is this is a dog yet? To have. I'm playing with him. Anyone else you can think of that can maybe point us in another direction or maybe help us with even the smallest little bit of information that could lead into something else? I mean, because you've already provided some stuff that we didn't know, so any minor thing could really... I don't know... I know that she told me that she wanted you to, to go to Savannah, and for whatever reason, Cass didn't want her to go there. So there's somebody in Savannah that she knows, but I don't know who that person is or what their relationship is. In Jacksonville, the city. Yes. Um, I didn't know anything about the Biloxi side of any of that. I had known her to date people in the Destin side. I mean, how did she meet these, these people? How did she know that this guy that wanted to have a threesome, how did he know he existed? I don't really know he existed. Like, the guys that she showed me on the phone that she was dating, I don't know if they exist. Maybe they're just, like, I didn't see even any pictures of Taylor with them, just pictures of them. Do you recall if it was like a like a text type picture, or if it was like a website background, or Facebook? They were both beach pictures. Both of the guys that she sent or showed me on her phone were beach pictures. So, and at the time she was living in Destin, so I just assumed that that's where they were from because that's what's down there. Yeah. And and then she said she did say that they were Air Force guys. I mean, that's just common down that way, you know, with Eglin being down there or whatever. It's just. It didn't raise any red flags, and I mean, like I said, like she's been with Jessica Wood. Those two guys that she said, you know, showed me the pictures of or whatever. Um, Cass. A doctor. What was the doctor? You see, or she? It's a she. And some other girl from South Florida. So that's like seven people that I've known her to like date or be with whatever in the past year. Who's this doctor? I don't really know who she is. She, I think, lives in like New York or something. Oh, New York. Okay. New York. But I know that she does. I don't know what kind of doctor she is. Cass may know more about her. Um, I think there's two or three Jessicas that she stated. Cass will refer to him as Jessica, one, two, or three. <laughs> How, when we, when we talked to Cass, I know she was telling me that I guess she started from well women after the divorce. Has Taylor ever told you, like, what age she figured out that, okay, she may be interested in women? Have y'all ever talked about that? No, I mean, I was kind of laugh at her because, you know, I just was like, Taylor, how do you know? I mean, like, my literal conversation to her, I'm like, either you like dick or you don't, and how do you not know that? <laughs> and she's just like, well, I can like whatever. I'm like, no, how do you, how do you not know? I'm like, Cause there's, I have no questions. Like, you know, I like guys. It's just not something I've ever had to ask myself, you know, and I know that she goes for, I mean, because Jeff 
everything I know about him is that he's like this big, sturdy, like military guy. Well, typically, you wouldn't think that somebody that like girls would go for somebody like that. Right. You know, yeah, and so it's Mary all over the place. Yeah, it's kind of confusing, and so okay. I think okay, well. And it can, those are the guys that all girls like, you know, the big, like, super tough ones, the big muscles and pretty boy faces, or, you know what I mean? But, sure. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's, so you think, okay, well, that's a typical girl thing, sure. you know? And then here she'll switch and be like, no, but I like girls. And I asked Cass that maybe two days ago. I said, do you think... Taylor is really a lesbian or is she not or what is she? Because now that I've heard that she's told people that she's moving in with Cass and her husband, it appears to me that she's trying to hide that aspect of her life. And and to somebody that was supposed to be very close to her, you know, I think, okay, well, you're that close to somebody, that's somebody that you could tell whatever and they're going to accept you for whatever you're doing. And Cass like, you know, I don't know, I think she's just confused and doesn't really know who she is. And I don't, I don't know, like, it doesn't make sense to me because, and she couldn't really explain it. She's just like, I like both. Like and even until recently she's mentioned, obviously, men. you and another man. Yeah. So it's not like she changed her mind and was like, I'm done with that part of my life. Right. I'm now... Doing this. Strictly doing this thing. Yeah. Uh, she's obviously kind of the, both the girl that you've seen her with, and I, I may know Jessica Wood if I saw her. Does she appear to be a real feminine woman, or does she appear to be more of like a, a muscular fit? Does the Jess is fit. Cass is not like the most feminine looking woman either. No, but Jess is Jess is more feminine than Cass is. I mean, Jess has fake boobs, blonde hair. I mean, she's pretty. I mean, she's still kind of like Taylor tries to come across as being a badass, but she's a cop. I, I mean, sure. so it's just a personality. She was, her dad's a cop. I mean, that's what she's from. You know what I mean? So she's not going to be like dainty girl, but, but she's pretty. And, and Jessica tries to look pretty. Like when I saw her at the wedding, I mean, she looked very dress, dress well, dress. makeup, you know, I mean, she doesn't come across as like trying to look like a man or anything like that. Um, most of the people that she's told me about, like have, or have seen her around, have been like prettier girls. Just trying to figure out, you know, a big, strong, muscular dude to yeah. a girl. Yeah, and then there's a lot of folks that, you know, we've been given names to or acquaintances, but we don't understand the friendship or relationship of, of said acquaintance. So, are they strictly that acquaintances, or were they dating? Are they were they dating at one point? And it's so that's what's one very difficult thing for this case. And that's the problem. Is I don't think anybody knows. I mean, Taylor appears to now that I've learned all this stuff just be this chameleon that like changes and shapeshifts to whatever person she's around and gives them whatever impression she needs to give them. Do you know if she's bipolar or anything? I know that she has gone to some sort of therapist. She did talk to me about that. I know that she has some sort of night tears or that's why she said that she was going to a therapist. Right. Um, and I think she takes medication for yeah. that. Does she suffer from some kind of PTSD much chance Has she talked to you about that? No. You know what her, her night terrors are about? Has she ever opened up to you about that? Mm -hmm. uh, you said there was another farm up in the north end of the county. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on that? Or it's just um, one of another aunt of mine has it. You recall the road it's off of, or? I can get it for you. Yeah, if you would. I think I've already, I mentioned it at the house yeah. earlier, but just a, does she, and does Taylor know about that, or that it exists? Okay. Well, far do they go shoot guns, or bows and arrows at, you know? Who? Taylor. I don't know. 
don't know what's going with her because she's with me. Have you ever heard her talk about going to some place, some land or something to shoot guns and arrows and all? No, she's not listening to me. I know that I saw when they were moving a bow and some arrows. There's some range she goes to somewhere in Milton, but I don't know where that is. Zach may know. This is like a public range, or is this something like her and her buddies kind of made up? I don't know either. But I know Zach shot with her before. Is the only reason I think he may know that. She's never even mentioned the boat. I mean, like I said, I saw one when she was moving, but. Hmm. Just, like, I don't even know what to think now. Like, I don't know whether to be worried about her, to be mad at her, to we be... We don't either. Cass doesn't Whatever. Either. It's always, that's what Cass tells us anyway. So we don't, we don't know. This is a, this is a peculiar case in that, um, and in a lot of fashions. You know, she's got multiple sources of income, multiple sources of banking, multiple sex partners of both sexes. So we can't, I mean, me, if you then you find a list of individuals that I'm acquaintances with, you could know who I potentially, you know, involved with or not, okay. because, you know, it's just how I am. Um, but it's very difficult when you come across 30, 40, or 100 people who are acquaintances, and we don't know in what what way they were acquaintances. Um, and also, you know, if someone's housing her or allowing her to stay there, why they would be untruthful, or why she would be untruthful, or why she wouldn't come forward. I mean, why, in your mind, you know her, according to everyone else we've talked to, probably now better than anyone. You are, from what everyone says, closer to her than anyone else, including Cass. And that's from Cass herself. Um, in fact, her own words is, I, I thought I knew her. But see, and that's me too. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the weird part, because I've only known her for a year. You know, I mean, I know what, I know what she wants me to know about her, yeah. but I don't know any backstory. You know, I know what she's told me she's going through in this, like, recent history, but what the truth of old stuff is, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know her dad's name. I don't know. And I guess he, she had mentioned him being dead and then turned up he's alive. Yeah. She told, I think, both Cass and I that, that he was dead. Um, if she were hiding from everyone, why would she be doing it? Well, I guess it's she thinks Jeff is somehow going to put her in jail. And I don't know really why. Because everything that I know that they have issues with is civil issues. That's everything that we know. I'm not aware of anything that he could do short of like planting a bag of dope in her pocket and calling the police. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't understand. Unless there's something else going on that I'm unaware of. Um, as far as this whole safety deposit box, whether it's real or not real, or um, cashier's checks, trying to get some money, trying taking credit cards, adding money, there's no crime in that. No, I mean, it's, it's all civil. It's all civil what, what she's doing. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. And that's the second time we've heard that today, is uh, that she may think that she's going to jail. and I don't understand what she could go to jail for. I don't either. And I don't know what she's that worried about. I don't know. I don't know why she would be. But we have spent a lot of time and a lot of manpower on this. And uh, if it turns out that you find out from anyone or her that that is the case, that she is in fact fine and that she's just scared she's going to go to jail, just please FaceTime me and say, hey, I'm good. 
going to hang up. I don't care yeah. where you're at. I don't care if you're out of the country or... Exactly. Stand against uh, the white wall, whatever. I don't give a damn where you're at. Just, you just say, hey, I'm good, and I'll see you on the... I'm good. I'm, I'm out. And, and that's kind of where we're at. Our goal isn't to prove that she's done... Try to prove that she's done anything wrong. What Our goal isn't matter? to... Uh, I mean, who cares? That's... I mean, we just want to find her. We want to obviously find her healthy. Um... If she's got a drug problem. Yeah, worry about is maybe the drug issue is where she's going with the jail thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's not illegal to say he used could, drugs. Right. It's, she even can even tell if me he could prove that he used drugs, at best, he could use it against her for custody issues, but he already has custody, more custody than she does. Mm-hmm. So... It doesn't make a lot of sense um, why he would battle it. Um, I mean, she could she could walk in here now and say, I'm high on heroin, and I couldn't arrest her for it. No, because she has nothing. Because it's, not, it's possession of, right. it's not use of. So, you know, and if it turns out that she's like, hey, you know, she contacts you and she says, hey, please don't tell the police, but I'm good. Just please, God, please just call me and let me know or text me. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I don't care what time of day or night, just please let me know because a lot of people are getting involved with this. Poor Chad's got drug into this. Uh, I'm sure he wants to be home with his family. Oh, I'm sure. Um, Sorry, my family. Well, it's like this is, you know, an inconvenience to me. Sure, your husband's mean, at home. He's, you know, and I you're waiting for him to like, cook for you. All of this is has been now because, like, now I have to deal with all her junk at my warehouse. Now I have to, you know, we had to go move past the truck moved and this and that. And she didn't do what she told me she was going to do with that and empty it out and whatever. So it kind of dumps everything on everybody. Sure. And I, I mean, I hate that for Kat too because now she's like, she is in her, all this she, shit. She's in a very odd position because she wants to help or she comes off as if she wants to help. I genuinely think she does. It's just like when, when we talked about it before, you know, we told her, we'll get you help with the drug thing. And she sure. tells us it's not a problem. She's not addicted to it. She's just done it the three times, whatever. And, of course, Zach is like, yeah, she's lying to y'all. I don't stupid. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know. Aside from Taylor's date at her skin, is the only thing I've ever, like, and I didn't know if that was like an anxiety thing, which it can be. It can be a drug thing. It can be. Which is an anxiety thing if it is a drug thing. Right. It's part of. Um. And part you, but of you would see her. She would always be like digging her face, digging in her arms. Have you ever heard or thought that she may be using methamphetamine? I don't think she was using cocaine. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I don't know. I mean. She, I know, messes with her teeth, and her teeth look fine. That doesn't necessarily always have to, though. But, but she on. did, you know, I mean, and Cass could probably tell you more about that, but, but it seemed like for a little bit she had stopped, but, I mean, she was back at it, but, I mean, you would just sit there and kind of watch her, and she would just kind of, like... Which is common with meth. Just, like, you know, just all the time, just... Have you ever noticed any needle marks, or... I mean, that's the difficult thing about all this, like, half of this stuff, it, it's kind of like, in one ear or not, because you don't know to even really pay attention or be concerned well, about it, because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, when you're not around people, like, you now, had you have been associated with, like, a prior ex or something that was a narcotics user, um, you know, you may, those things may flag, but right. with you, I don't think that you've really been associated with not enough to pay attention to. Yeah, I mean, is she like frequently uh, like go to the restroom a lot or for longer periods of time than normal? I didn't notice it, but I also didn't pay attention. Like, I just don't think about a lot of that stuff all the time because typically I'm just doing what I have to do, you know? Um, but Kathy told me that she spent a lot of time going to the bathroom. Like, it was very difficult for her, but I don't know. Kathy said that she had a, that Taylor had, had some sort of issue. Difficult time going to the restroom. Not like, I don't know what's going on with her. She's always in the restroom. No. Like a medical yeah. type. Okay. Um, 
Because she told us that she had cancer, and now we're kind of finding out that maybe she didn't have cancer. Maybe, maybe something, who knows? At this point, who knows how much of this stuff is real because we're getting so much, and y'all are, you obviously, you've heard so many different things. And that's the problem, like, it's, we've just been inundated with, like, a lot of crazy information about her that nobody knew. Yeah. Well, um, this is Chaz's phone. She's walking with us. What kind of weather is she talking about? She wanted to go take a picture of it, and looks like she couldn't get through to the box it was in because James Patton's okay. skills are so phenomenal. Yeah. Um, something about, um, I think she had written a letter to Cass after the incident occurred. I think that's what she was looking when for. When you say incident. After we had that discussion about the Biloxi and the cooking. Honesty night. Yeah. This is all, this is commonly referred to as honest, honesty night. Yeah. Okay. Now, did the Steve Williams guy call you from the Milton K-9? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that was the private investigator company she's talking about. I don't know. I never got a call. Just don't test me to them. <laughs> I'm much more of a nighttime person than a daytime person. Really? Yeah. You know, this is So, wait, this has been at work and. Yeah, I'm usually in bed by this point. What time? 9.30. You guys are going to be starving. Exactly. Uh, you want to know what in the hell's going on? I'm sure you understand. Um, what is all these pictures of knives and guns that you text her? What is all that about? That's stuff we found in Taylor's car. Where's all the stuff at now? In the office. Have you seen her guns before, before that? No. She never... Did you, so earlier you had said that you believe that she may carry or can still carry? Or no, she, she makes that no doubt to anybody. Has she ever shown you? Like, hey, oh, you yeah, like she her? always has a gun. Um, any of the guns that y'all found, are those, just, is it the same gun? No, I've never. She usually carries a, um, a stainless gun that I've seen. It's the one that I've seen her with. It's silver type yeah. color. Hmm. And we haven't found that gun. So, for our knowledge, she may still be in possession of said gun. She usually has. Technical eyes and. Hmm. How was her attitude at the farm? She really wasn't in a bad mood. The only thing that she ever got upset about was the thing with death in the jail box. I mean, she seemed pretty okay. I mean, like she was talking about going to that wedding on Saturday. Well, she was pretty happy about that. What did y'all do out there? We just went around and looked at the horses and the pigs and the, all the donkeys. We all together there the whole time? She never ran off? She, I mean, she walked away. We were just kind of all looking at some of the horses and she would look at other things or whatever. We just walked around and we came back home. And we really just were killing her. Okay. Um, like, I didn't think she was... Like, she would never appear to have done any, like, drugs then. And sure. didn't seem to, I mean, she, I mean, like I said, she had beer during the day, but. Did she express any time that day that she didn't want to talk to Cass? No, I mean, we, we talked about. When she was upset, or I don't want to talk to her, she's annoying. Well, I mean, no. I mean, like I said, we had a conversation about, was she going to stay? Was this something that she could settle down and behave with? Sure. Well, what was Jeff told her to change your locks, prop the door up, put bells in the window? So what is that all about? That's what 
what I was telling you when we were downstairs. Yeah. Jeff was explaining to Cass, and Cass was really worried about it, that um, I guess there had been multiple times that, that there was a lot of violence or something between Taylor and Jeff. And so he had kind of scared Cass because he's like, if she has a key to your house, you need to change your locks, you need to do all this. And so Cass was pretty. So I'm assuming she has a key to her house. Oh, Taylor has Yeah. How the farm? Are these um, like pet animals, or are you like ride the horses? Well, the horses are rideable. I mean, like, like my daughter spends a lot of time out there too. Um, they, you know, do some rodeo stuff or whatever. I mean, the donkeys are just pets and stuff like that. But I mean, the horses you can ride, and I mean, there's a couple out there that aren't broke to ride, whatever. They're basically animal hoarders. Mm -hmm. How does that work? With it? You just hop on the horse and just go, or you have to have the little seat? Oh, the saddles and stuff like that. Do they keep all that stuff out there? Oh, yeah. Did y'all ride any horses? She hopped on one, but I mean, cause some of them even hop on bareback. Some of them are easier than others to deal with. There's, they've got some old horses that are like super, super kid safe, and then they've got barrel horses and... I don't know nothing about horses, so. <laughs> But... So she jumped up on one of the horses a little bit. Sort of like, you know, Kayla likes to be the, oh, I can do all things kind of person. Do you know who this Amy Bluestein person is? I don't. Okay, I got the word. Somebody needs a break. Um, someone needs a break? Yes, sir. That's fine. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead. We've got about 24 minutes left. Y'all will take a break. Go ahead and have a snack or whatever. We'll make this our morning break. We'll try to be back about 11.05. Pick up where we left off. Leave your notepads, pencils. Don't discuss the case. Thank y'all. Mr. Brossett, you said that I could have a copy of those two reports with um, Elizabeth Ritchie and I could have the depot. I'll get those made. I don't need, if you just give me the reports oh, yeah. and the depot, I'll make a copy of the reports and, re, and give okay. it back to you and then I'll read the depot. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then otherwise we're on a break unless somebody has an issue. We're talking about uh, they provide us with notes of the things, it's, and it's still hard to match up. So what I've asked uh, Ms. Jensen to do is give me a copy of the three discs that she's going to introduce. I can look at them overnight. And She's introducing them in about two hours. I understand, but they're not going to look at them. And if there's inconsistencies, uh, I can point it out to the jury in closing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, you'd agree to let him testify. Um, oh, his notes. Yeah. And then they just give us copies of the disc of those three. The only thing I want to make sure is that there were no, there was one conversation where uh, at the end of that conversation, my notes reflect they had a long conversation between the officers about the case. And you say that's not in there. Right. Okay. I actually talked to John Barasset about that call. Just, they're talking to, um, they talked to Ms. MacArthur on the phone and then Gigliotti doesn't turn his, micro, his uh, recorder off. So then there's this long conversation with these police officers at the police station. So I never intended on using that. Okay, so. Okay, so we're going to come up with, he can just testify, and then that will save us some time, and then you're going to have it overnight, and if you find an issue, we'll deal with it. Right. 
Okay. She's going to introduce those eventually, correct? Yes, yes they'll okay. be introduced. Now, if you have a second to pull those for me, yes. I'll make copies in the break, and I'll give you all till 1110. Okay? 1110.